We thank God for the service thus far. Yes, amen. For he reigns in majesty. Yes, he does. He reigns. Yes, he does. And he deserves all the glory and all the honor and all the praise.
Philippians 2, 1 through 4. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one spirit and one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but to each of you to the interests of the others. Now back to Joseph Campbell and the book, The Heroes with, with Thousand Faces. This term, he calls this a monomyth, but he based this on the journeys of reading many people's stories um, as they would create books and movies and notice that there was a storyline and he connected all of these storylines. And that's where he goes, where he talks about the hero's journey and he examines the stages of the heroes who goes on an adventure faces a crisis and wins and returns victorious. Joseph Campbell broke his journey down into various phases. The hero's journey is incredibly flexible and it has three main parts that we will focus on today. Where the hero sets out on his journey, seeking possibly reluctantly adventure Secondly, the initiation where the majority of the journey happens, the hero arrives and finally returns. Just bear with me for a moment today. I'm gonna to get to my point. Accept this call. 
And I could think of some heroes right in this church. I didn't know them personally, but the Whitakers. Mm -hmm. They came, they moved to Plainfield. They accepted whatever call God had them to do. And just sitting in their funeral, I feel like I know who they are and the many lives that they changed because they accepted a call to work in this community. In whatever manner they did, they did it unto God, but they accepted that call that was on their life. Yeah. And then accepting the call, we can think about different ones you can relate to in the Bible. I guess I'm sure you can think of people that you know yourself that maybe doesn't get recognition of being that particular hero. But we thank all the people who accepted the call. That's why we call them a hero because they accepted the call and from them accepting the call, they change not only your life, but the lives of other people that's not only connected to you, but the many different people that was connected to that call that they accepted to do. Jesus, he he came. Well, I'm so glad he came. He said, Father, here am I, send me. And he accepted the call, and he came and changed the way um, they had established the way they thought religion should be, how we should worship. They had their own thoughts of who should be the, the um, main person that they were designated. The children of Israel felt like it was all about them, that they were designated, that they even thought they was actually better than most people because they misunderstood their call. Yes, I did. And Jesus left us with a command. He told us to go into the world and to basically spread the good news. Tell others about, about God. Tell others about the Heavenly Father. Tell others about the kingdom. To love our neighbors and our brothers as, ourse um, as ourselves. And we are our brothers and sisters keepers. And Mark 16 and 15 states that he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And as I said before, when we accept these calls, it does make a difference in our lives and God can call you to probably have a business and you may feel like oh there's other people that have this business but well, what can be so significant about my business well your business can reach people that may not can reach that other place to get whatever product they have that could be similar to yours but it could be the way you design it it could be the way you package it it could just be the way that you give it it's something different about your business so if the Lord puts on your heart to start a business, mm -hmm. make sure it's something that's going to do be of service to others. Yes. What is it going to do? What is, will be the purpose of this because this is your call? Yes. And if the Lord puts something on your heart that way or he tell you to go buy somebody groceries and you know, well, I only have $50 and the Lord said, well, take $25 and buy them groceries and you buy yourself groceries. But you have to get to the part to get out of yourself. Yes. Because yes. so much yes. we'll be like so focused on yes. yourself. Well, I really have to get out. Like, what am I supposed yes. to get? Mm -hmm. But you will see because you reach beyond yourself. This is yes. answering the call. There was a call for somebody who needed something. And because you reach beyond yourself and then you think about splitting it, the money in half. And as you split it in half, you don't even you you won't even think about it later, but yeah. you realize you have more than enough, yeah. and then the next time can come along, and then you're not so hesitant because now you already know yeah. what it's gonna bring, yeah. and so accepting the call not only helps the person in your community, uh -huh. but it also makes helps you because yeah. it empowers you, yes, yeah. it makes you grow, it makes yeah. you stronger, it makes your faith deeper. Yeah. And God, it just, it lets you see that there is more possibilities yeah. in this world. Yeah. 
And as this week was going on with Serena Williams and her being at the U.S. Open and the many different people who said, oh, she was my hero, she's my shero, she's this, she's that. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be in this position. I wouldn't be able to play tennis. They changed the world of tennis. But it wasn't so much of just changing the world of tennis, too. She told people, I'm from Compton. Yeah. And that changed the view of the children in Compton yeah. to see that I yeah. can do that. Yeah. And because she accepted that call, yes, it was her career, she went through a lot of different challenges coming back and back all the many years and the wins and losses. But because of her, so many young women lives are changed, yes. and especially women of color. Yes. Yes. And they changed the game in tennis. Okay. Yeah. Our jobs are our opportunities to speak up, mm -hmm. to use our voice, and not to feel that we cannot speak, not to feel that no one will listen, but it's just a matter of knowing when to speak up and when to say what yeah. you want to say. Yeah. When you can see there's somewhere, some some place within your organization that they can use change. Yeah. Just because the people that are in charge, they're the ones who always have to say so, but they do at times have suggestion box. Or maybe if they don't have one, suggest the suggestion box, so you can put your <laughs> suggestion in the box. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's right. In some way, God will work out the opportunity yes. because your voice can make a change in that situation. Yes. So we can't just sit back and feel like our voice doesn't matter. And I'm de I've am i been very guilty of that at times where I just say, oh, my voice doesn't matter. Nobody's going to listen to me anyway. Yes. But it's the fact I said it. Mm -hmm. And then who knows, they may listen to you. Mm -hmm. And it may not be when you're there. But later on, you can hear later results because I have heard that happen. Yeah. Things I was suggesting, and many years later, I was like, oh, so now they're doing it. Uh -huh. You know, so my voice was heard, but yeah. it just took some time. Yeah. But my voice was heard out there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when, we, when I say to make the suggestion and you want to um, speak up, I was watching the movie Sonic. The part, the Sonic 2, just a glimpse of it. And I was saying, why is this little thing running around making havoc? But at, and then he came back home. I'm not going to tell too much of stuff. I don't know somebody watching Sonic. But he came back, and the man that he lives with, like his guardian, he's like looking at the paper. And Sonic is feeling so good about himself. I'm the hero. You see me in the paper? He said, no, you're, the he you're in the paper causing more havoc to what the criminals are doing. Mm -hmm. You're trying to save people, but you're trying to make it about you. Uh -huh. And that's what it says to be humble. Mm -hmm. You don't want to make it your call about you because it's not about you. Yeah. It's about helping the people. And that's why God said to yeah. stay humble yeah. and whenever we're making a call. Yeah. So now we come to a story that I wanted to go to that's in the Bible that really relates to this just as being one of us. I would say we're an ordinary person. And when you accept the call at times, it can bring um, recognition to you because of whatever position you've been placed in. But all people that do the call doesn't always get that notoriety. They're not going to be recognized globally, but they'll be recognized amongst the people that surround them. <coughs> yes. So today we're going to focus on this story called um, this story in Second King five. Thank you. 2 King 5, 1, verses 1 through 5. Now, we've all heard, well, I'm going to say we, but I, through the times, there has been a story about Nahum and Elisha. And Nahum, um, he was a king of Assyrians. 
and not the king, I'm sorry, he was in charge of the Syrian army. And he was stricken with leprosy. And then um, he was a man, they say he was very handsome, his name meant beautiful, you know, they said he was rugged, even the Bible talks about he was a, a man of valor. And then we hear about Elijah the prophet, and what Elijah told Nahum to do. But very few people focus on the little girl who bridges the gap. The little servant girl that was, that was kidnapped from Israel when the Syrians were fighting. Mm -hmm. They took this little girl in, and she's, only the, she's the only reason that Nahum knew anything about the prophet Elijah, because she spoke up. But when we think about this little girl, she was a slave girl. She was taken from her family. She was living in a land without any of her people. And so she was done wrong. But here she is. She sees that Nam's wife is feeling really bad about this with him having leprosy. And leprosy is a debilitating disease. It can, is full of tumors. At that time in the Old Testament, they would put them on the outskirts of town where they couldn't live around everybody. But I guess because of Nahum's position, he was able to stay in town. I started thinking about that. But with Nahum, they, everybody was um, focusing on him, and everyone thinks of him as the hero. But as I said, when you think about the young girl, here she is, and we know stories when people were in captivity or when they were enslaved, and, and she wasn't even valued enough to even give her name in this text. They just said, a little servant girl. Mm -hmm. And this was a time when men didn't really value women or children. So that's why they became, they always stayed nameless in these particular stories. Mm -hmm. And so as it goes on, when you think about her as a servant, you know, they weren't able to talk and be free, but she missed her voice. She saw that he needed to be healed. She went beyond who she is. Who knows how they were treating her. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I would have been angry that you took me from my family and have me enslaved and I got to be here taking care, be your wife serving and running back and forth to, to get her food when I could be home with my mother, my parents, you know, with my parents, my grandmother, my brother, sisters. I could be there, but here I am in a land that I'm not even familiar with. But she went beyond her own self. She thought about the fact he needed healing. She looked at the wife and saw how she was looking. She saw that she got compassion for them. And she allowed herself to dissipate and just see and talk. And she took a risk to even say her faith and even talk about her God because it was almost like she was making them feel like their God, the Syrian God, was worthless. But for her to say, well, my, I know a prophet who can heal him. And so therefore, the wife, she goes and she tells her husband. She tells her husband about this man who can heal. But at this time, the prophet Elijah, he had never healed anyone from leprosy. No one had ever been healed from leprosy. But this girl put that out there that he can be healed. Yes. She risked her life that what if he didn't get healed? He would have came back and he could have killed her mm -hmm. for making him go on a journey or a place that wasn't even going to help him. Yes. But And who knows, why did he actually go? Why did he listen to this servant girl? Because he wanted to be healed so bad, he didn't even focus on his own gods anymore. He wanted to find this prophet. And then in second, I'm sorry, in King, um, not second Kings, in Luke 4 and 27, it states that, it validates that Many and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, 
save and name the Syrian. So that lets you know that he was the only one, but she was prophetic in what she did, actually. But she never knew he couldn't heal, that he never healed anyone, but she knew her God could do it. And Elijah never did that. He never did that type of healing. So either from this, that young lady, she risked everything about her. She, she spoke out of turn. She shared something about her God in a land that don't believe. And then she said something that had never, ever happened. And who knows what was going through her mind at that time? And a lot of times we start thinking, should I do it, should not do it? Is this really God telling me to do this? Should I act on this? I never thought about doing this before. Uh, you know, so we think about it so much. So we don't know what was on her mind. But I like when I thought about this passage about this servant girl, and this is how we have to be humble. And if you think about so many people in our lives, we wouldn't be where we are today had those very people did not act on the call. We wouldn't have a lot of technology. We wouldn't have all of the inventions. We wouldn't be where we are today had people not acted on the call at all. So this is how important it is for us to act on our call, to know that we can do it, that we have the courage and we just trust and believe in God and know that if he told us to do it, yes. he's going to make yes. the way when we yes. don't see the finances. Yes. We don't worry about where the money is coming right. from or the resources, if you might say, yes. but we just focus strictly yes. on what we yes. need to do and the more we need to do it whatever oppositions should come yes. just say to yourself this got to be the right thing because too many oppositions are coming in my way yes. it's trying to keep me from getting to that point yes and as i kept studying about accepting a call and thinking about that there is a hero in you i went to mariah's carry song about hero and when you really read, when you really look at the lyrics of the song, you understand and you see where you where you really do respond that way from the song. Mm -hmm. And it says, there's a hero if you look inside your heart. You don't have to be afraid of what you are. The answer, there's an answer if you reach into your soul and the sorrow that you know will melt away. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and cast your fears aside and you know you can survive. Just answer the call. You will be able to survive whatever it is, whatever obstacles that come along. Don't be afraid, I'm telling you, to be encouraged, whatever your job may be, wherever God leads you, whatever he places on your heart, just know that you can do it. And just think about the lives that you can change. You're not looking to get, get to be publicized about it, but at the end of the day, you want to know that you left here empty, that you left here with empty by helping other people. Yeah. You didn't leave here full of everything that you could have given out your portion to be able to help others grow, to be able to help the people around you. And because you help others grow, then your own family will prosper and grow because it comes back with somebody else answered the call for something that you was in need of. And I'm coming to the end. All right. And we're just going to pray. That Father God, we thank you for this word. God, we ask you, God, to allow this word to go into somebody's heart. If there's something that they've been desiring to do, God, to let them know that they can accept the call to know that they will make a difference in the lives and the people around them. They will make a difference in their own family and their communities. 
that this is what you placed us here to do, to help each other, to be one another's keeper, to guide each other, to encourage each other, to do more for you, God, to seek you, God, to know that we can be committed to you, God, that you are our provider, you are our healer, you are our way maker. If only we just trust and lean in and know that you are there with us. And if there's anyone who doesn't know Christ on today, we just say to you, if you want to have Christ in your life, just say, Lord, I'm here. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins and I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Guide me in the way that I should go. Connect me with the people I need to be connected with so that I can come to know you more, so that I can be a true follower for you. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. We trust that you got a word on today.